In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at five Stream Deck plugins that hopefully just add a little bit of flavor to the experience of you using your computer. Some of these are gonna be really nice for streaming. Some of them are gonna be nice just to save you time. And um, yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna dive into them. So roll that intro and uh, we'll hop right into it. Before we dive into today's content, let's go ahead and pause for a moment to consider the value of making smart decisions. Speaking of which, we're thrilled to once again partner with Mint Mobile, the pioneers in transforming the wireless industry. They're dedicated to providing premium wireless service without that hefty price tag we've all come to dread. Ever find yourself puzzled by the sky-high cost of your wireless bill? Well, if so, Mint Mobile is on a mission to demonstrate that there's a smarter way to do things. For a limited time, new customers can enjoy any three-month plan for just $15 a month. That's correct. You were hearing that correctly. 50% off their unlimited plan. Imagine accessing the nation's largest 5G network, enjoying unlimited talk and text, and all the benefits of a high-tier wireless experience at half the cost. The transition to Mint Mobile is a breeze thanks to their eSIM technology. Many of you can seamlessly switch over from the comfort of your home in as little as 15 minutes. And for those of you that prefer a physical SIM card, Mint Mobile's got you covered there with a free SIM sent directly to your doorstep. Let go of the old, overpriced, and convoluted ways of wireless. Head over to trymintmobile.com forward slash howtotech to snag this incredible offer and get premium wireless for just $15 a month. My wife and I jumped on the Mint Mobile bandwagon over a year ago, and we've been fans ever since. Who can resist the allure of significant savings? What's going on guys? Chad here from Attitude Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at some plugins for Stream Deck. And um, yeah, we're gonna be taking a look at a few of them. So the first one we're gonna be taking a look at is the Discord plugin. And I have to say there's been a lot of updates to the plugin for Discord for Stream Deck that make it a lot better than it used to be. There was a lot of settings and things that you could do inside of here that had to be done through external plugins and now can just be done directly inside of here. So let's see what we've got. We've got voice channels so we can see how many people are in there and other information. We can see all the sounds on the um, sound, uh, whatever that's called. It's not called a sound deck, but um, the uh, soundboard we can control individuals users. So yeah, we can actually go in and do that. This used to be a completely separate plugin to make this work, but that just works now. We can bounce back and forth between servers very easily and see how many people are online. And then we also just have a bunch of options for like muting, deafing, voice channels, text channels, push to talk, push to mute. So let's take a look at what it looks like on the Stream Deck itself. And um, here's the preview of kind of how it looked. And um, we'll kind of go over the ones that are set up currently for Discord. So I'm gonna move these up to the top and kind of out of the way. And then we can see here, we've got a toggle mute. So this is gonna be able to um, toggle the microphone on and off. We can see that it changes the icon whenever we mute our microphone. From our soundboard, we can decide to play uh, any of the Discord sounds or any of the sounds from the different Discord servers you're in. So we've got one um, in my Discord server that sounds like a user disconnected. So it makes you think somebody left the call. <laughs> it's kind of funny whenever you hear that one. So um, we've got a disconnected one for us. We've also got a server so we can see how many people are currently on. Um, if we wanted to, we can disable the notifications for messages or enable them. Um, and we can also not display if people are online, display if people are online, or display um, if anybody's been recently active. So we've got some control there. So at a glance, if you wanted to be able to look at your stream deck and not have to, you know, necessarily full screen Discord, you can actually see if any of your friends are online. Um, we can set up notifications if we want to be able to see that somebody sent us a message or added us or anything like that. We can have one key just specifically for notifications. Um, we can set up other ones for specific servers and joining specific chats. Um, and we can set up whether the icon's dynamic or not. So you can see this kind of how it changes based upon whether or not you are in or not in that call or chat room. And then we can have options for like push to talk and push to mute. And let me see where this is at right here. Yeah, th there's just a bunch of settings in here. We can also change um, deafen. Um, some of the default ones that I always have is the ability to mute and deafen my microphone and join and leave the Discord server at any point in time for some of those servers that I normally go into. So it's really convenient to have that. We've got, you know, server stats. We've got a bunch of other things that we can adjust inside of here. We can adjust volume and it's just really neat to see all the different customization options now that you have directly inside of just the Discord plugin itself. So that is the Discord plugin. 
Let's go ahead and talk about a different one. And this is gonna be Matrix Display. Um, this one kind of blew my mind, the fact that this is just a plugin and it works so well with Windows. Basically what this is set up as, it's the ability for Windows to go ahead and kind of snap Windows around into certain locations. So you could, you know, if you wanted VS Code to be this small on this side and this big on this side or go to certain locations, we can do that. And it's actually pretty easy and um, all you gotta do is go to um, open in Stream Deck or Matrix Display. And Matrix Display will show up, I believe, under Custom. Yeah, so under the Custom icon. And then you can just drag in Matrix Display. And currently, you can see we've got one right here. And we can set those up kind of however we want to. So you can set this up for a specific window if you wanted to. For example, like it says Notepad, Chrome, Edge, whatever you want there. Or if you wanted to set it for an active window, you could just set it for the active window that's currently focused. So like right now it'd be this window. And let's say we wanted it to be targeted to the first monitor, which would be this one. And then we wanted to say, where do we wanna put this? Let's say we wanna put this in the top left-hand corner. Um, you can actually go through here and look at all the different options it has, or you can do your own custom one yourself and then set spacing and a bunch of other details. It's really neat, especially if you have specific programs you wanna do this for, not just the one selected, but you can basically have this set up to where it'll basically just snap this program, as you can see, to the top. But that one didn't kind of go where I wanted it to. Let's try a different one. Yeah, that looks like that's in the top left-hand corner for sure. So now I'm gonna click on this one on my stream deck and boom, yeah, you can see how that's going to the top left-hand corner. And yeah, you can, you can do that. I've got one that'll go to the bottom and you can see kind of how we can bounce around between those two and it'll pop the you know window to different locations. So that's pretty neat. I can see a lot of customization use for this. Um, one of the ones that I think this would work really well with and um, if you guys haven't been using multi-actions and setting those up, you can basically set up multi-actions of where you can have a multi-action that opens a specific program puts that specific program, say, on your leftmost monitor or your rightmost monitor on the right side of that monitor. So you can get really custom with it and say, you know, have one button press that does like, you know, four or five different programs and puts them exactly where you want them to every single time for that workspace. Could be really useful for streaming and just any type of productivity, but that is a really neat one there, the matrix display. And the fact that you don't have to install anything else, it works directly with the plugin. And I guess just standard Windows commands is pretty neat. Um, and like I said, there's a bunch of uh, flexibility with the functionality of it. You can use specific windows or active windows, um, which monitor you wanna set it to. Um, it's even got a button you can press. Um, I'll go ahead and press it. And you can see that there's a one currently on my screen and my other displays that you know have different numbers assigned to them are set there as well. And then we can actually go in and set the different percentages based off the monitor they're on and a bunch of other different things with it. So very customizable and um, very neat. So let's go on to the next one, which is the mouse spotlight. For any of you that probably do anything similar to like tutorials, th this is just a really good one. I'm gonna go ahead and press it now. And you can see now there is a yellow disc or circle that's following me around. And we can actually see that it just makes a little thing. It just draws it on the screen and it follows it around. And if I press it again on my stream deck, it goes away. We have a bunch of different customization options. We can change whether it's a, you know, a ring, whether or not it's just a circle. Um, we can even do things like magnifying. So if we wanted to use this as a magnifier, we can see that we can make that bigger and maybe it's easier to read. So maybe this is an accessibility thing for those of you that might have a hard time reading smaller print or uh, text on a screen. There's some options there. And then there's a special one for find my mouse in case you accidentally lose your mouse somewhere on your screen. Makes it a little bit easier to find it. So that, that one's you know a little bit different compared to what we're used to showing on the channel here. But it's also, once again, just a really nice one to have. And let's go to a different, more up-to-date, I would say, color picker. I, I'm really enjoying this one. Yeah, this, this is a really neat one. And we can see that we've got some options here and it actually shows you out the hex code, the RGB values, um, and we've got some different options on how we can set those up and how we wanna view those. And it also shows up here under 
the custom option. Yeah, the custom and then color picker, you would just drag that in. And then we can basically set that up to where if we press that button whenever we're on something, you know, it'll just kind of track around with us so we can see how it's moving and it's changing those colors. It's got that kind of zoomed in look so you can really hone in on whatever color you're wanting to get. So like, for example, if I wanted to get the pink on the tip of this like arrow here, I can grab that and all I got to do is click. It makes like a, a cute little popping sound and then I can click say up here and hit control V and you can see it actually pulled that hex color value directly from that tool uh, that we were using. So that's all of those. We're going to go to the last one. This one is the only one that's given me a little bit of issues from time to time. This is picture in picture movie player. You need an extension for this one. I'll show you guys how to do that. It's not that difficult. Um, so we'd go to custom again and then drag in picture and picture movie player. And then we would sec uh, select which browser we're using. So if you're using any other browser, select those. I'm currently using Microsoft Edge. So I'm gonna select Edge. And then it'll give you the option to install the extension. Um, I believe my extension is installed. I just don't know if it's working right now. Yeah, I, I, guess, I guess it's working. So let's go ahead and let's pull up a YouTube video real quick and I'll show you how easy it is to basically, you know, do picture in picture on something like YouTube now. All right, so now I've got one of my YouTube videos up here and I'm gonna try to click this picture in picture button as we can see right here. Um, yeah, right there or this one. They're both kind of set up the same way. And um, we've got this set up to where it minimizes the browser window and it's got some other, yeah, color stuff it does. So picture in picture, boom automatically to the bottom right hand corner and I can keep working on other things if I wanted to. And if you didn't want this to automatically minimize the browser window, you can also just uncheck that box here where we said we got it set to yes. We'll just set that to no whenever we, you know, throw it down here in the bottom right hand corner, which is pretty convenient and really easy to start using picture in picture compared to all the, you know, keyboard shortcuts and buttons you got to click on screen instead. That's the efficiency of the Stream Deck. Don't click as many buttons and have things do things for you by themselves. So all right, guys, that's been five more Stream Deck plugins that we've covered. Two of them, I believe, we've either covered similar plugins or them in a different capacity before they got an update, but we can see how them changing and updating has significantly changed how we use our Stream Decks and also how we use our computers. Um, I utilize my Stream Decks every single day and I just find more and more uses for them. And honestly, it kind of, um, it, it can become a problem. And that's why I love that people keep coming up with plugins because it keeps me from having to go in there and make scripts and stuff on my computer to make some of these things work. So the fact that these updates um, keep coming out and these awesome plugins keep getting developed for the Stream Deck is just really awesome. I wanna thank all the people out there in the community that makes these things, especially the people that keep them free and accessible for all those people out there that wanna use them and don't feel like paying money for something that may or may not work for them so that's pretty neat um and yeah yeah thank thank you guys for watching this video if you want to see more stream deck content let me know in the comment section down below i think the next time i'll probably cover one i'll probably um, do one on streaming and then probably get back into um, maybe smart home stuff and uh, autom automation maybe i don't know stuff like that we'll see um thank you guys so much for watching this video like subscribe comment all that stuff and let me know what you want to see in the next video um, in the comment section down below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.